entity that exploits other people. This is, you know, pure and simple, uh, an exploitive device. So we start to look and start to break these things down. And in Chicano studies, by being in area studies, in which we're looking at knowledge of, uh, of uh, Mexicans here in the United States, Mexicans in Mexico, and now Latinos, we do what? We're looking at it in a different way, you see. We're looking at it in, we're looking at those exploitive processes. A pedagogy also, as the people in Arizona will tell you, a pedagogy is that you use Chicano studies as a way to motivate those students. Students that have always been told that they can't make it. And many of you, your counselors told you not to go to college, that you wouldn't make it. Pretty pendejos, aren't they? <laughs> Anybody can really go to college if, uh, they, uh, if you have the proper uh, Gerard, come on up here. Uh, you know, if, if, if you have the proper tools, you have the proper motivation. You know, people tell me, says, what would you do to Mexicans to make them go to college in Chicano studies? I says, I would change the Bible. In every pl uh, place that I see Jews or Hebrews, I would put Mexican there. <laughs> and I said, within, uh, I said, within 20 years, I, I said, everybody would think that they could make it. Is that Beto back there? Yeah. Okay, Beto. Yeah. Up here. <laughs> they would think that they could make it. Because it's how what? You look at yourself and how other people look at you. So this is what we're about. Well, in Arizona, they did something really good. They had a what? They had there in Arizona, they had a... Uh, uh, a program that was now cutting that, that dropout rate, which is 60% in most uh, places. But now they were graduating almost 100% of the people. You had people going to college. But people here in Arizona did not want that because the prison industry was going to lose money because it had been privatized, you see. And they could tell you how many people that were going to have in a prison from the second grade reading scores. So they don't want you to read. They want you to be gangbangers. They want you to be losers in society. Well, Chicano studies teaches studies better than anybody else, but that we can make it, you see. And this is what the pedagogy is supposed to be. And they were doing it in Arizona until you start to get an assault on that program. Now, I would like to, 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 to uh, uh, first of all, uh, thank my students because I've learned an awful lot from them. Because when you start to get an evolving field, it's supposed to go through the vetting process of a what? Of a teaching institution of students. I've written so many uh, editions of Occupied America because of the, uh, the questions that students brought up in class. They're educating me. The, the, the libraries are not educating me. But the students are educating me. All right? Uh, so I, I would just like to say that. But my students here I will keep me going. I'm 79 years old. I'm falling apart. But I get motivation from them because I do think that they have prolonged my life. They are the greatest. Let's give a clap. For them. My first boss was right here, uh, Beto Ruiz. He's a professor with us. He uh, went to jail to get the department, and uh, you had about 50 students that started the department at Cal State Northridge. That's all we had at that time. And they sacrificed. They went to jail. I didn't. They hired me. I'm a technician. I'm supposed to put things together. But they're the ones that, that kept me honest. And the students after have kept me honest. Gerard was, uh, is a professor now. He was a student then. And he's always uh, been critical. And that's very good. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn it over just for uh, Gerard to say something. And then that's all.